Creo Parametric 3.0, Lesson 5, Part 2. A number of items we want to take care of before we uh, do some of the relations or editing at the end of the lesson. And one of them is setting up our datum planes for geometric tolerancy. So we've got our standard default datum planes, and we want to select the ones for our datum A, B, and C. So we're going to select our top datum plane, right mouse button, properties, click on the standard that you want, either the ASME or the international. We'll do the international standard here, ASME, ANSI. So basically this is the one that was in uh, selected or available and used up until about 1994. Since then, this is the internationally accepted ASME standard. It's going to be on the datum plane. Click OK. Oh, before you do, let's change it to, to A. And you don't have to worry about capitalization. It automatically makes it a capital. Front datum is going to be datum B. On datum again. Datum C. Datum D. And datum E. So we have our datums established. And these are now features of the part. You can go over here and you can take a look at them. And they actually exist as annotations, not just as default datums. And if we go and we want to try to turn these off now, you'll notice that they will not go off. You can turn off the tags, but you can't turn off the datums. Turn the tags off also by just selecting annotation display and turning those on and off. So we're going to leave them all on. If you did want to shut them off or hide them, you could come over to the model tree here and you could not suppress them, but you could go and you could change these. You're putting them on layer and then you can hide them. You can hide them here or you can put them on layer and hide the whole layer. So we've got our datum plane set up right now. The next thing that we want to do <clears throat> is take a look at our layers itself. We'll go over to our, first of all, the layer tree, and we'll see what we have. And again, you can see we've got all the different standard items here. And then you've got where your axis automated layer is. We have the whole. Take a look at the ones that are available now. So certain things have been created and put on layers for you. We're going to actually create some new layers. If we click up here in the layer tree in the navigator, click on new layer. You also could just put your cursor over in the navigator, right mouse button, and click new layer. And this one here, let's uh, let's type in datums, don't hit enter. And let's go and select a few of the items on the screen. So can zoom up, make sure everything is turned on. It is. So if we want to put just one type of item on here, we could actually go to our filters and we could select what kind of one we want. So you can see there's a lot of choices here. It'll only give you those, for instance, if I pick axes and I select this and this, makes it very easy for the selection process. And let's call this holes instead. Put both axes on. Click OK. Now if I wanted to make another one, and let's call it datums. 
and let's put on just a few of the datums. How about the um, follow what's in the book, but I'm just going to put a couple on here. You don't have to hold down the control key to multiple select here. You can just keep selecting. It'll put them in the list. If you don't like what you got, you can always click on it and you can remove it. Right? So we've got both of our datum planes on there. Okay. So what this allows us to do is divide our information. Let's open this up. If we click on this one here, we'll see what we have. We have hide. Let's see if we can get rid of those. We can hide the layer. See if it goes away. The set datum. You'll notice that nothing really happened on the screen except for the tag went away. No, nope, the tag's still there. But if we do it with the holes, we do the exact same thing. Hide. The axis goes away, but the holes do not go away. So you can hide the axes of the hole. That's a datum feature, but you cannot hide the actual feature. You could take a feature and you could suppress it. Now, if you did that, what would happen is that you would shut it down for the model. So now it's gone. And if you go back over to your model tree, you'll see that it's got a little black dot in front. That's one of the reasons why you want to turn on your filters here and make sure that all of these are checked because suppressed objects, if this was unchecked, you'll see that it disappears from the model tree. And so whoever is working on the project would not know that there is a suppressed object on there, in this case, feature on the whole. You can actually do the same thing in an assembly and suppress or hide whole parts. So again, make sure that model tree shows what you want to have available. So we'll put that back on there. So again, we'll go back over to our layer tree and unhide. That didn't really help to have that hidden there anyway. And unhide this one, and you can see the datum plate, the datum axes come back on both of the axes and go back over to the model and you can see the datum axis here we created that one and I want to check my tree filters one more time it's got everything selected okay so again there is my axis for tree selection and then this is my hole this is the other hole so we've divided the information up a little bit and you can see datum D Let's go and unhide it. It didn't really hide anyway because it's a standard, or I should say a geometric tolerance set datum plane. So there's your datums and your layers. Now the other thing we may need at some point is a cross section. So let's click on view tab and go into section and see what we have available here. And we'll select planar and pick on datum D like so. You can flip this if you want, the direction. We'll change the shading to a different color. Turn on the sections themselves. Turn on the 2D version of it. And you see you can orient the 2D cut, the visual cut. It's not a real cut. And let's turn on the 3D dragger. And you see with this we can actually pass the section as a as an angle however you want to look at it we'll keep it like that check and click on sections in the model tree and we can actually go in and edit the hatching Add a few more lines. We could apply one of the standards to it if we wanted. And we can go back and you see the little green dot here. This means it's active and we can deactivate it. If you don't want to see this section, you can actually turn it off, suppress it. 
and you can go back and you can edit the definition of it also. We'll leave it on for now. So that's our cross section. We're going to use that when we get to the end of the um, <clears throat> lesson. I think it's lesson number 11. And we will use that for a view. Now, if you want, you can actually go down here to your filters and click on, see what we have here. Let's try quilts. I don't think quilts will work. Now let's leave it on smart. And click on sections, right mouse button. Let's turn off show section. And we could edit it. Now let's leave it alone right now. You're going to actually edit that when you go to the lesson 11 and you're doing a drawing for this anchor part. Now, Let's say your boss comes in and they want to do a change. They say, we have a, a ECO. Um, the part's going to get considerably different. So we want it to be uh, longer, wider, let's say. So instead of uh, 2.256, it's, it's 3 inches. Hit my left mouse button a couple of times, and that pops to 3 inches. And the next day, somebody comes in and they say, OK, we want to have uh, this cut a little bit different. Uh, in fact, the distance here for this little ear portion is going to be 2.25. Left mouse button twice. And you'll see what happened, though. All of a sudden, this is not centered. It's not centered. And the hole is not centered either on that ear portion. So we want to be able to make sure that the design intent is always held for this. So let's go back to this cut, or I'm sorry, let's select the datum plane because the cut was used using the datum plane for the center of its symmetry when we created that symmetrical cut. So let's select D and let's, let's pick on um, edit definition. And you can see that we went from the back datum plane over here. So what would be a better way to do it? Well, let's just double click on it and put your cursor over the top of the dimension when it comes up. And this says it's D14. D14. And if we double click on this cut over here, we see that this one, if we put our cursor over the top, A hard time selecting it. There we go. D8. So if we go back over to our tools on our tabs up on the top, in the ribbon, and we click on relations, we can again, let's click on the datum, and it says D14. So let's say, let's pick D14. You can type this in. And we say D14 equals, and then click on the cut. D8 divided by 2. And OK. And let's go back over to our model and regenerate. And by regenerating, now if I went and I wanted to change a dimension, for instance, this dimension here, double click on the datum plane, and I double click on this, it, it'll say dimension is driven by the relation D14 equals D8 divided by 2. So I can't change this dimension anymore. That slot will remain in the middle all the time. But we have another problem. The hole is also not centered. So instead of going through the process of writing a relationship, let's just tie that hole into the datum plane. So click on the hole, right mouse button, edit definition. And let's take a look at where the references were. One of them is from the edge here, and that one's still good. We want this dimension. But the datum, we do not really want this one. So let's click on it, 
right mouse button remove now very important click again under where it says select one item hold down the control key and this time let's pick on D instead of B we're picking on D and if you go in here it's not a distance we want we want it to be aligned Pick. so now it should work fine so your new boss comes in and they say well um, we're not really going to go with those dimensions uh, we want this depth here to be uh, uh, 1.875 for the cut and and you say okay no problem and then it says well we also want uh, the length here to be 2.625 no problem And not only did the sizes change, but the hole and the, the hole followed the datum plane. The datum plane was set as one half the distance for this ear portion here. And it recentered itself as you made the ECO changes. Uh, this, I think, is pretty much all. The last thing we did, we did a little bit of flexible modeling. And we're going to use the move tool, the dragger. And we see we can actually drag the feature a little bit. The face can make it angled. And you can play around with this. So you can do some interesting things with it try different designs, one-offs. You can see the move feature is over here. You can always suppress it. And then you can bring it back when you want. This concludes Lesson 5, Part 2.